In this video, we're going to take our basic chart that we made in part one and connect a real data set to it from the jaildatainitiative.org. From there, we're going to add a chart title, add a title to the y-axis, and do some other formatting like grid lines and limiting the y-axis to tell a better data story. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to the jaildatainitiative.org. I have a link to this data set below. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will find a, a link to their per day CSV data. Go ahead and download that. Once it's downloaded, move it into the directory where you're working on your script. And take a look at this visualization they have here. This is going to be our inspiration viz for what we're making in D3. So here's where we left off in video one. Like always, the code to all of this is in the description below. So to connect our chart that we made in the first video to our downloaded data set, the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of the old data set. So we can just delete that and hit save and you'll see that our chart vanishes because there's no longer any data for it to create a line chart with. So we're gonna load and process the data from the data set we downloaded. To do that, we're going to use d3.csv and call the data set. And then we're gonna use the then function. Basically what that does is it says, after d3.csv has loaded and processed this data, do something else with it. So we're gonna load and process the data Thing we're going to do with the data is run a console log on it. So I'll hit save and we'll look at our console. And don't worry about this error, that's because we've deleted our data set and our D3 code down here is still looking for that data set. We'll fix that soon. For now, we can see that we've loaded an array of objects. Our chart is going to be using this date and population field. We need to let D3 know that this is a date and that this is a number. So in addition to console logging the data, we're also going to tell D3 some important information about the data that's being loaded. We're going to load the data, and after it's loaded, we're going to parse the date and convert the population to a number. We'll create a constant called parse date and give it D3 time parse with a date format. After that, we're going to use a for each call, go through all the data and say that every date is a date and that every population is a number. This plus sign is saying make it a number. When we hit save, we're going to see that our console log has updated and our dates are now dates and our population is blue. That means it's now a number. Part of this then call is we also want to then make our chart using this data. So I'm going to take this curly bracket and parentheses and cut it and bring it all the way to the bottom of the code and paste it here and hit save. So now after we load the data, parse the dates and convert the population to a number, and then do all that work we did in the first video. We do have to make a change here because our data, we're referencing it as a data here. It's no longer being referenced as data set. I'm gonna do a control find and replace for every instance of the word data set, and I'll replace it with data. I wanna do the same thing with d.value because in our data set, the value is called d.population. We'll replace that. And now when I hit save, there it is. There's our same line that we built in the first video, but it's using our downloaded data set instead. Right off the bat, there's a very easy thing we can do to help with the readability of this. Our Y domain is still using zero as its minimum. This particular data would really benefit from a more limited Y axis. I can see from the data that it doesn't really go lower than 60,000. It doesn't really go lower than 65,000 either. So let's set our minimum to 65,000. We hit save that's quite a bit easier to read and to see the trend. Additionally, this might be too many months. So rather than do every one month, let's do every six months. There we go. That makes that quite a bit easier to read. I'd like to do something similar here in the Y axis. Rather than show, looks like every 2,000, let's make it every 5,000. Now the way we're gonna do that is come down here into where we're calling our Y axis and we're going to customize the ticks by using the dot ticks call. We'll use D3 max to find the maximum population and we're gonna minus it by this limit that we gave it earlier. And we'll divide that by five. And you'll see that now our y-axis is now limited to every 5,000 population. But like our inspiration viz here at the Jail Data Initiative, I'd like to represent it like this, 95K instead of 95000. To do that, we're going to format our ticks with the dot tick format function. And we'll use D to call our data. We're gonna say return the data, which the D basically means, you know, like 95,000. That would be one of the Ds. We're gonna divide it by 1,000. That'll give us 95. And then we're gonna use the two fixed call, put a little K at the end. When we hit save, now you'll see it says 95K. But let's clean this up even further. Again, referencing our inspiration, they don't even have axis lines here on the bottom or on the Y axis. And their axis labels here are quite a bit bigger and easier to read. 
So we're gonna do some additional formatting here for our axis labels and, and to remove the axis lines. Let's start with our X axis. I'm gonna replace all of this with some new code. And we'll walk through what's happening here. One piece of new code in here is we're gonna set the font size with a style call. We're gonna make it 14. Here's where we set our six months. Here's where we formatted our X axis. This line here, dot call, where we're grabbing this domain, we're grabbing the axis domain and we're removing it. That's gonna remove the entire axis line here. We also need to go select all the individual tick lines. We're gonna make those a stroke zero so that they disappear as well. And then we're also going to come into the SVG and select all of the tick text and we'll change its color to be a bit grayer. And when I hit save here, you're gonna see our lines and ticks go away. And this will get a little bit bigger and a little bit grayer. Something similar now to our y-axis. We're gonna replace all this code that we've been working on then with an updated y-axis, where once again, we will make the font 14. This is where we've set it up to do every 5,000 and put the K at the end. We've made our tick sizes zero and added some tick padding here, to, just so it looks a little better on the axis. Again, we're gonna remove the axis line, format the tick text, to be grayer. So to make things look a little bit cleaner, we're gonna remove the bottom axis ticks. And so we're using the visibility stuff, we're gonna set a style of visibility, and we're gonna iterate through all the nodes that are being added here. And we're gonna say, if the index is zero, make it hidden. Otherwise, make everything visible. When we hit save, you're gonna see that this removes the bottom axis tick. Basically looks for the first one in the list and removes it. So now, if we look at our inspiration again, we're looking quite a bit similar. Next, let's add our vertical grid lines. To add our vertical grid lines, we're going to select all X grid. You can call this whatever you'd like. X grid just helps you remember that you're working with your with the grid lines that you know impact the X axis. For the data, we're gonna call our X that we developed in video one and the ticks associated with that. And we're gonna use the slice one call. We're gonna join to that data a line and we're gonna set the X1, X2, Y1, and Y2 attributes of this line. This basically means set the beginning and end points of the line. We're gonna give it a gray stroke and a stroke width of 0.5, so it's nice and thin and unobtrusive. And when we hit save, you'll see these very light lines show up. And we'll do something very similar for the horizontal grid lines. For this one, we're gonna select our Y grid, and we'll use the Y that we developed in the first video for the data this time. We're gonna grab the max population, just like what we did earlier. We're gonna minus 65,000, divide it by five, and use the slice one call. We're gonna join a line to that data. And just like in the vertical grid lines, we're gonna set a beginning and end points for each line. This time it's using the width. So we're going from zero to the full width of the chart. We'll set this a same stroke color and a same stroke width as the vertical grid lines, and we'll hit save. You'll see they very softly show up in the chart, look very clean. Next, let's give our chart a title. We will append a text element to our SVG. We'll give it a class of chart title. It's if you want to style it with some CSS later on. And we'll set its X attribute to margin left minus 115. Now I spent some time finding exactly what looked good. You might have to adjust these up or down to find where it belongs on whatever viz you're working on. But we'll give it an X and a Y and we'll style the font. I made it 24, I made it bold and sans serif. And then we will define the text that will be there. I'm calling this prison populations in the US have trended upwards since summer 2020. Hit save and that title shows up at the top of our chart. We'll give a little uh, label to our y-axis as well. We'll append, again, it's similar, we'll append a text element to the SVG. We're going to transform it and rotate it 90 degrees so that it sits snug at a 90 degree angle next to our y-axis. We're going to anchor the text to the middle, give it a 14 point size, nice gray color, make it sans serif, and in the text call, write total population. When we hit save, that shows up here on the edge of our chart. Makes it nice and clear what's being measured. And to tie it all together, let's credit the source of our data set. And so we're going to append another text element. And this time, you know, we give it our styling, pick a nice width that makes sense for the chart. I make it smaller than everything else, uh, sans serif. And our text is gonna be source jldatainitiative.org. When we hit save, there's our source, nice and snug down there. So if anyone's curious where the data came from, they can go find it for themselves. And just like that, we have upgraded the chart we made in video one, which was a nice basic line chart with fake data into an effective and impactful line chart about prison populations in the United States. In the next video, we're gonna add some interactivity with a custom tooltip that shows up as you move your mouse along the chart to really bring this all together and finalize the chart. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.